So far, uh, we have talked about variables and we have shown that variables can store uh, single uh, values. Like, for example, A is assigned the value 1. If I inspect A, we'll see that it has the value 1. So, what happens when we want to store in a single variable multiple values? In order to do that, we have to use something that Farrah calls collections. It's called a collection because collections is a group of classes that does exactly that. It helps us store uh, multiple uh, variables uh, uh, inside a, a single uh, uh, object. The first, uh, you can find uh, a lot of uh, different, uh, different uh, classes that belong to collections if you browse the collections packages, which is down here. You can see that there are a lot of different kind of collections. Because Faro has over 100 uh, different kinds of collections, diff 100 different classes of, uh, that, that belong to collections uh, group, uh, we are only going to concentrate on the very basic ones, on the ones that we are going to use the most. In this case, in this tutorial, we are going to focus on array. Now, what array is, is a way to store multiple values, but the, the amount of values you can store inside assign a variable, for example, is going to be of a fixed size. So, the amount of uh, values will going to be, uh, going to be uh, fixed. So, in this case, to create a, an array is actually quite simple. We, uh, we, in this case, we create a variable with a name an array. You can use any name that you want. We use the assignment here, which, by the way, the assignment is a message like any other message that can be uh, overriding that, that's as we have shown in the inheritance tutorial. Uh, and in this case, we assign uh, the instance of the array. But you see that here we use the new, which is the kind of message we used early on to show how we create instances of classes. Uh, but in this case, it's a, a keyword uh, message. And it's a keyword message because it takes a parameter, an argument. Now, this argument here indicates how large our array is going to be. In this case, we say, I want to create, I want, I want you to create me an array of five slots. So what it's going to do is going to go to the memory and find an area that's going to occupy with an array. And the array is going to have one, two, three, four, five uh, slots that each slot can take a single value. How we, we assign values to, the, to these slots that we also call indexes? Uh, this is an example. We send a message, of course, as always. In this case, we say that at 1, at index 1, put the value 4. At index 2, put the value 3, 2. At index 3, put the value, the, the, the string uh, SSS. And if we do this, do it, we'll see, and we go here, inspect, we'll see it actually created, as we said, uh, an array that uh, is uh, the first if value is 4, then it's 3, 2. Then observe that this is not division. In this case, it's actually a number. This is a number that you can actually use in your uh, mathematic classes. Uh, so this is a type of number. And this is, of course, the, the final string. Now, what will happen if we want to find a value at a particular index? What we do, we send the message at by itself. So if we print this, We'll see that it says that first, at 1, the value is 4, which, of course, is the case because we have put at 1, 4, and we can see here that this is the first value to get. Now, if you come from another programming language, the first thing you're going to observe is that we haven't started from 0. Now, this may, may, may seem strange because uh, in most programming languages, uh, everything starts from 0, especially when it comes to uh, collections or, you know, uh, arrays and all this kind of stuff that you can find in other programming languages as well. The reason for that is because a computer, as a, in computer zero is also the starting place in machine code. Uh, this is exactly how the computer works. And programming languages tend to follow this uh, principle that the first number is always zero. But we humans do not count from zero. We count from one. When you say, uh, what is the first thing? This is number one. Uh, 
uh, we ne never say let's start with number zero. Because Smalltalk is made in such a way to be much more understandable by humans, Smalltalk has the conventions uh, that it starts from zero and, and stands from one and not from zero. If we want to, we don't want to do the tedious process of sending message and message and message and message again and again. There's also a, a much simpler way, especially if you, for example, create an array that has 100 indexes. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to, to keep sending this message again and again and again. You can instead send this message. So you, we do it here and assign again. We send it an array, but this time we don't use the new. We create, we send these messages here, which is its value. You can continue adding messages for its value you want. Uh, we don't need to specify the size of an array uh, because already the Faro can understand from the arguments that we use how many uh, how many ind indexes it is going to need for the array, how many slots is going to need in the memory to put its separate value. An even simpler way is to create leader arrays. Now, creating a leader arrays is all, all, also very simple. You use a uh, name of the variable here, assignment, and instead you use uh, the dash symbol here and you use parentheses to put inside your values. Each value is separate with a space. So it's one, two, three, and you can, of course, do it like we have done it before. Uh, for example, we can do it uh, one, SSS three now, or I think it should be uh, no 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 it should be two three two three. Let's see if that works because I'm not sure about this. Uh, let's print it. Oh no, let's do it and then inspect it. No, it hasn't done that. So we don't. You shouldn't use this number here. Instead, you should use uh, numbers, strings, and I think symbols. Uh, no, I think it's, tr uh, it's numbers and strings and booleans. This is the only thing that you can actually use, so you can add here true. Uh, let's do this again, sorry, oops. Yeah, let's do this again. And let's go here and inspect it. And yes, one, true, and SS. Now, the reason why, the reason, uh, the, the, uh, the reason why we don't, don't do three, uh, two here is because it tends to uh, interpret reader every symbol that we use. So this here is interpreted as a symbol. We haven't explained symbols uh, yet, but we are going to explain them in a later tutorial. Symbols are a bit like strings. Uh, they are, you know, pieces of text, but they are different from strings. And this is not something that I'm going to discuss right now, but uh, I will show you exactly what happens. Now, take this example, for example. Now, if we print this, observe what happens. We have an array, this means that this, this is an array, okay? This is how an array is uh, represented. Now we have the number one, which is a number. We have a number two, which is a two, but the plus sign here, even though we, what we wanted to do is actually add only three and not one and two, what it has done here is takes the plus sign and interprets it as a symbol. And we know it's a symbol because it started with a dash and it doesn't have a parenthesis like we do now here with an array. So when you see only a dash and then uh, text or symbols or anything else, uh, it is a symbol. It's called a symbol in far. Because we don't want to do this, it's better to use a dynamic arrays. Now, a dynamic array is actually a very simple syntax. We use, uh, I, don't, I forget this, the name of the symbol here. Uh, we use these symbols here. And what will happen in this case if we do this, do it. And inspect it. Inspect it. You see that it hasn't interpreted as we wanted. So in this key, in this place here, one plus two is uh, is sending the message here as it should be. A hello is interpreted as a string as it should be. And here we sent a message uh, uh, ten uh, uh, ten divided by two, proof, which of course is five. So we have here an example here. Now. We can do the things we have done in a, in a, in a dynamic arrays because again it's an array, it's nothing different. So if you do this, do it, and then we inspect the array again, we'll see that it has replaced five with hello again. Now see what happens when we try to access uh, more than 
at the rate. Look what happens here. Do it. Now, immediately repeats an error. Why? Because when it created the array, as it has done here, when it created the array, it, uh, uh, it, it, it actually created a specific size for it. So it actually sees that you have passed uh, three uh, different values. Three values. They don't have to be different. It, could be, it is possible to be, of, of course, the same values if you want. And it knows that it's going to create of uh, an, an array of size 3. Now, what we have done here, is we try to, to create a new slot to, to expand an array. And we cannot really do this with arrays. We are not allowed them to increase their size. We only allow to access what already indexes have, we have created for an array. So this is very important to remember that arrays are of fixed size. We have five uh, index array, we're only going to use those far indexes. We cannot really increase the size and add new indexes if we want to. Uh, in order to do that, we'll have to use another type of collections. And we're going to see other types of collections uh, later on. But, but when it comes to, co to collection of data that you want to be of a fixed size, then in that case, you use an array. And that's all I want to show for an array. See you on the next tutorial.